stand to your feet. How many of you are excited about tonight? It is a night of fire. It is a night of breakthrough. It is a night of deliverance. It is a night of freedom. It is a night we are going to have a time tonight. I'm excited. So this is the third day, the last day of our fast. And how many of you know when you fast, things happen fast? When God says, I'm going to bless you indeed, that means he's not just going to do it in theory. He's not just going to do it with your faith. He's not just going to do it in hope. He's going to do it in action. Indeed, you're going to see this. Yes, indeed, it won't be long now. Yes, indeed, it will not be long now. Things are going to happen so fast, your head is spin. One blessing on top of another. Blessing, 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 blessing. God, will you bless me in D. That's what the prayer of Jabez said. He said, y'all can't even curse who I blessed. So tonight, I don't know what your name is, but tonight your name is Blessing. Tonight he has named you with a new name and your name is I Am Blessed. Oh, I'm excited about tonight. Now the kingdom of God is voice activated. My sister, friend, prophet is Dee Fomby. She, she preached this message and it was so powerful and I just took it over like a tag team when I was in Alabama. Because we've been preaching this, the kingdom of God is voice activated. It's not thought activated, it's not action activated, it is voice activated. And so we're going to use our voice tonight because we're gonna activate some things. God is a God of manifestation. And my name, my name is Tiffany, and the definition of my name is the manifestation of God. And so I cannot be in this place tonight and there not be a physical manifestation of why he sent me here. We will see a tangible manifestation of God tonight. We don't serve a God who doesn't answer. We don't serve a statue. We don't have to go down in stretches and poses to make our God work. Our God is a God that answers by fire. And I say to everybody, let the God, who's, let everyone you call God, let him be God. Let the God that answers by fire be God. Somebody told me you better watch yourself talking about old shoes. Baby, you know I tore them to pieces. And I know y'all don't like when I do that, but you know, Elijah mocked them. Elijah laughed in their face. Elijah said, oh, okay. Well, let the God that answers by fire be God. Oh, I pity the one. You gotta understand what's happening. You know witches are afraid of you. They're not, af they are afraid of you. I don't care what high level witch comes your way. I don't care how many times they go to an altar. I don't care how many false prophets they go to and say, can you curse them? As long as you, as long as your name is blessed, they can't curse you. Oh, it's a terrible thing to fall into the hands of a living God. It's a terrible thing to fall into the hand of the living God. And so tonight we're going to activate the kingdom of God by our voice. Everybody go to Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says, And the earth was without form and void. Darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Isn't it funny that the power and presence of God can be in a place, but there still wasn't anything created there? Isn't it something that the Holy Ghost can brood or hover over a place but still, there was nothing there. He said it was still without form. It was still void. It was still darkness. Form means confusion. There was still confusion. So right now in your life, you have the Holy Ghost. You have the power and presence of God. But you're trying to figure out why there's still confusion. That's because, baby, your prophetic word is hovering. Okay, some of y'all got it. She got it. I've seen her on the face. She got it. 
Right now, the word of the Lord, the promise he gave you is hovering. Like the spirit of God brooded upon the waters. The word he moved was the word relax. Right now, your prophetic word is asleep. It's relaxing. It's chilling. You want to know why? Because it's waiting on your voice to activate it. It's waiting for the activate. It can't do nothing without you saying it. So right now, you feel it. You feel the breakthrough pending. You feel the birthing pains. You feel the contractions. You feel it coming. You're saying something is about to come. But the baby is breached. So you need a midwife, which is me, and I'm gonna take my hand up there and turn that baby around. Cause that thing gotta drop. Tonight it has to drop. Oh, I'm excited tonight. Verse two, the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. The prophetic word is hovering over your head, hovering over your house, hovering over your marriage, hovering over your womb, hovering over your healing. It's hovering over the hospital. It's hovering over that bad doctor's report. It's still hovering over your bank account. It's hovering over your business. And guess what he said in verse three? And God said, let's stop there because he had to say something. The power and presence of God was there, but nothing happened until God said. Now, because everybody's here, name is blessing. We're just gonna translate that to, and blessing said. Let there be light. And there was light. You want to know why? Because the word has to obey you. It's like Siri. That's how I want you to look at it, unfortunately. So then you say, hey Siri, it activates. But before you say, hey Siri, the power is still on it. It's still on. It's still working. Nothing is happening though, because it's voice activated. So until you say, hey Siri, can you look this up for me? Nothing happens. That's how your prophetic word is right now. And let there be light. Now, you can apply this in any area of your life. Let there be light in my marriage. Let there be light in my business. Let there be light in my DNA. Let there be light in my sight. Let me be light in my liver. Let there be light because wherever light is, darkness has to flee. And darkness is evil. So wherever the darkness is, wherever there's confusion, wherever there's void and it's without form, you can command the darkness in your marriage. You can command the darkness in your life to say, let there be light. There, there is no darkness that can live where the light of God shines. The light of God is so brilliant, so luminous, that anything that, that it comes in, in, in contact with dies. He said, let there be light. And there was light. Hebrews 11.3 says, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now I know we all know this by heart now. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now before you build a house, you don't live in it, correct? Because it has to be built. It's probably just dirt land. It's probably just stilts up there. But before a house is built, you gotta fix the faulty foundation. How many of you are reading Demonic Covenants and Curses by my grandpa, our grandpa, Reverend Grandpa? So we know the Bible says, if the foundation is faulty, what can the righteous do? You can do nothing on a faulty foundation. This is why you see beautiful skyscrapers being built and if the foundation wasn't set right, it crumbles to the ground. So if you look at your life and your parents built you on a faulty foundation, you are seeing the physical manifestation of that today. But how many of you know we have a God that reverses the irreversible? I don't care what the devil said was irreversible, we serve a God who reverses. So he said, through faith we understand. Not, not that you, you don't have to understand it. He just said, through 
faith, we understand. That means if he said it, I believe it. I had faith that when I got here today, y'all was going to show up. I didn't understand how you guys were going to get here. That was none of my business. I just had faith that you were going to be here. Through faith, what I now understand is the world, or in other words, I want you to put whatever your situation is, the world was framed. Or in other words, your marriage is framed, your business is framed, your health is framed, your community is framed, your region is framed, your country is framed. Whatever that is, whatever your world is, your children is framed, your womb is framed. Come on, whatever that thing is, I want you to put that in there for the word world. Whatever that it is, it's framed, or in other words, it's like a house that's being built. You cannot live in this thing without it being framed first. And it's not framed by cute quotes. It's not framed by memes on social media. It's not framed by your favorite Christian influencer that you're saying their affirmations behind them. It can only be framed by the word of God. So what you do, I'm giving you the keys. You take the word of God over your situation. The word frame means to restore. The word frame means to repair something that was broken. The word frame means to perfectly join together. The word frame means to uh, make one what he ought to be. So through faith we understand that that man you haven't met yet that you want to be your husband is made what he ought to be by you speaking the word of God. Through faith we understand that the woman you haven't met yet is God is going to perfectly join you two together by the word of God. Through faith we understand that whatever fell apart, God is going to restore it back for you through the word of God. You see how we apply that? So tonight I just need you to be bold enough to believe that your promise that God gave you is permanent. Tonight, I just need you to be bold enough to believe that the promise God gave you is permanent. Tonight, I need you to be bold enough to believe that the deliverance God gave you is permanent. Tonight, I need you to be bold enough to believe that the victory God gave you is permanent. Tonight, I need you to be bold enough to believe that the healing God gave you is permanent. I don't care if that thing popping back up. I don't care if it's bothering you again. I don't care if you thought you was healed last week, but it's saying something. You speak to that thing and you said the devil is a liar. God said my miracle is permanent. Leave now. Just need you to be bold enough to believe that that marriage he promised you is permanent. I need you to be bold enough to believe that that prodigal son or prodigal daughter is permanent. They are coming home. They don't have a choice because they don't belong to you. They belong to God. And as long as you are with God, he has custody over them. They're coming home. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray just for a little bit in the Holy Ghost. Now, I know, I know, I know. Don't send me an email about how we're not supposed to pray in tongues in public. Because let me just give you a 30-second breakdown of why we're getting ready to do it. When you go to the gym and you go and work out with a whole bunch of people, does the workout edify the people that you're with? No, it just helps you out, right? But there's a reason maybe you're motivated to go to the gym instead of working out at home because half of us find out that if we work out by ourselves, we're going to do five push-ups instead of 20. We find out that we're going to do two and a half sit-ups instead of 10. We're going to run around for 12 minutes instead of 30. But when you're working out with other people, statistics show that you're actually more motivated to get the workout done than you are if you did it by yourself. Now, some people have more discipline than others, so some people can finish their workout at home. But for those that don't have a lot of discipline or those that like to be in community, like to, like to work out together. Well, praying in the Holy Ghost is a workout. It's what strengthens your spirit man. You want a strong spirit man? You want a six pack in the realm of the spirit? Pray in the Holy Ghost. You want some biceps, some triceps? You want to be double cheeked up in the realm of the spirit? Pray in the Holy Ghost. You want endurance? You don't want to be winded. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You feel a little weak and you don't know what to pray about anymore because things don't seem like they're happening. You pray in the Holy Ghost. So we're gonna pray together and this is gonna be our gym. 
and nothing we pray is gonna, nothing I pray up here is gonna edify you and nothing you pray is gonna edify me. You're edifying yourself. But what I know for sure is that the Holy Ghost is here. And I don't know what you need tonight, but the Holy Ghost is gonna make sure that every single person in this building gets what they came for tonight. If you don't have your prayer language, I declare in the name of Jesus that you will get it tonight. Now I'm gonna read Romans 8.26 really quick. It says, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things, some things, a little bit of things, just the things you want, just the things your enemy want, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are called according to your purpose. Now, do you love God? Are you called according to his purpose? Then all things, all things right now, I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what it smell like. I don't care what it seemed like. I don't care what they're on the verge of. I don't care what it seemed like. It looks like you just lost. It doesn't matter. He said, all things work together for good of you. Now, let me read this in the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, meanwhile, the moment we get tired in waiting, God's Spirit is right alongside of us. If we don't know how or what to pray, it doesn't matter. He does our praying in and for us, making prayer out of our wordless sighs and our aching groanings. He knows us far better than we know ourselves. He knows our pregnant condition and keeps us present before God. That's why we can be so sure that every detail in our lives of love for God is worked into something good. Amen. Let me also say this, because I think this is powerful. We've been praying about, well, I'm always praying about the Lion of the tribe of Judah, because I be, you know, they be messing with me, so I be sending a man of war, you know what I'm saying? But we have the Lion of the tribe of Judah. I don't know if you ever studied this, because it's really only in Revelations 5.5, but I found something out. It was because I, I kept hearing the Holy Ghost say, he's the lion of the tribe of Tiffany. He's the lion of the tribe of covered by God. So I had to go into scripture to make sure that I was in order for even saying that because I didn't want to switch up the scripture. And I was like, why do I keep saying he's the lion of the tribe of Tiffany and the lion of the tribe of covered by God? And he took me to Genesis 49. And this is when, who was it, Jacob? No, 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 it was um, his daddy. I, Isaac was Jacob's daddy? It's Jacob, thank you, I was right. Genesis 49 says, Jacob called his sons and said, gather yourselves together that I will tell you what's gonna befall you in the last days. What the father did was he gave either a prophetic word or a prophetic judgment to each of his sons. And one of his sons was named Judah. This is where we get the lion of the tribe of Judah from. It was a person that he said, you come from this loin. So my declaration over you as we go into prayer just for a few minutes is I want you to say that he is the lion of the tribe of whatever your name is. You are the one your family will praise and honor. Remember when they sold off their brother, Joseph, Judah still wasn't innocent, but he's the one that spared his life. Judah said, let's not kill him, let's just put him away. So and essentially, it was praise that saved his life. 
It was praise that saved the life of the man of God. I don't know about your praise tonight, but it's going to be your praise that saves your life tonight. Because when he called it the line of the tribe of Judah, he's saying you're the line of the tribe of praise. So you're the one your family is going to praise. Your hand will forever be on the neck of your enemies. Your family will honor you. You're a lion's cub. And right now you're home fresh from a kill. Who dares to mess with you? The scepter, which is a mark of your authority, will never leave you. So as we go into prayer, we're going to pray in the Holy Ghost. And I don't know what God is going to do, but we're just going to pray in the Holy Ghost until I feel like stop. Koto shere banda la kapandia, le bando la taya bando rebeke pi, le banzo de breve katala da da banto, ribeka bando la kapandia tele de de banzo reba kapai, ye kapabande le de banzo rebeke tai, ye kanda da da la da da banzo rebeke bende le kebani atolo da da boto, rike papanda la kabidi atala da da baso, raka papanda la kabadi atela de de bande rebeka pi ya kapai. Yeah, Papa. 
agenda they begin to put up flags everywhere they put up flags in the embassies they put up the rainbow flags everywhere why are they putting up a flag it's because they understand what a flag is in the realm of the spirit it means victory it means we won this war whenever you see the flag fanning in your face it means they thought they won but how many of you know we serve a God named Jehovah Nissi Today we erect an altar to Jehovah Nissi. And as the day goes on, you're not praying and rejoicing and jumping and singing for victory. You already got it. Any shot of rejoice you're doing is from a place of victory. It's not for victory, it's from victory. These flags indicate that the banner is here. Before you go to a parade, and before they come out 
behind the parade, there's a banner that announces that this is all about to come next. I decree over your head that the banner of God is making an announcement for your new season. I decree over your head that the banner of God, Jehovah Nissi, is making an announcement on your behalf. And the announcement is, the person named Blessing has it already won. When you go to the hospital for the next report, you go with the banner going before you. Before you parked, the angel stood with the banner and announced your arrival. And the banner said, this person right here already has the victory. Before you go back to the bank to try again, just know that the banner has already gone. You will testify in the month of new beginnings that Jehovah Nissi, God our banner, has given you the victory. I want you to just lift up your voice and begin to declare the banner over your life. Zipando la da basure bakatai, le bando sheke, zipando la de basai, ribeke to sheka pai, la banzu rebai. I see angels all over this room waving the banner over everybody. I see angels online waving the banner over your house. I'm not talking about little angels, baby. I'm talking about they're hovering over your house with the banner. Not this one right here. This one is marked. Not this one right here. This one is marked. Not this house right here. This one is marked. I don't care what type of leprosy they're saying just hit this nation. Not this one right here. It will not come nigh you. Come on, declare the banner is waved. The banner is waved. Not you. It will not come nigh you. They just found the report of a man that had leprosy in Florida. They're showing reports of malaria in the United States of America. I don't care what they say. You have a banner over you. You're marked. Sekapai, yo shata balada basu, ribe kato shade, lebando lodoboso. I heard the Lord say, tonight is a night of rejoice. I hear the word rejoice. I hear the word rejoice. This is gonna be a heavy night of rejoicing. A heavy night. I don't care what your neighbor look at you like. Baby, you better, cause your answer is in your dance. Tonight your answer is gonna be in your jump. for no reason. I heard the Lord say, your answer is in your shout. That's right. Let heaven hear you. That's right. Let hell hear you. That's right. This shout is at your house. This shout is at your house. This shout went to the hospital. This shout went to... Rejoicing. Tonight is a night 
that we will halal the Lord. We will cry out hallelujah to God. We will halal him. We will hollow him. My message is about seven minutes long. But I'm going to give it all I got. Because I said if these people beg me one more time to teach this message. And what is the message? The office of a daughter. Give me seven minutes. How do you know I got saved August 2015? It's my birthday! Natural birthday is 4th of July, Independence Day, freedom. But the real birthday that matters is when I gave my life to Christ, which was in a month of new beginnings. So I decree over you everything. God, during this fast, God put you on a reset. And this month will be your new beginning. I, I gotta teach for seven minutes, don't get me excited. so excited you feel like you're going to explode because God said remind them one more time the cloud is about to burst remind them one more remind them one more time apostle that the cloud is about to burst remind them one more time that the cloud the size of a man's hand is a burst why that's important real quick it's important because in first kings 18 there was a curse and when god cursed the land a few chapters back he stopped the water system he stopped the rain why did he do that because the god that they served Baal, was a weather god he messed with the weather system and so he said oh, okay you think your god knows about weather i'll just shut it up since you like to serve another god let him answer your request so he shut down the water system. It didn't rain for a span of three and a half years. You know what happened. Elijah went to bat with the false prophets. He mocked them, laughed in their face. He even said, give me a log, give you a log. You keep yours dry, but I believe my God so much, I'm gonna pour a gallon of water on my log. But here's the miracle in that. How do he get the water if it won't know water? So he said, I believe in the living God so much, I'm gonna put myself at a disadvantage. While y'all are dancing around for your water, God, and you're cutting yourselves, and you're praying in your false tongues, I'm just gonna laugh at you and I'm gonna pour water on my love because let the God that answers by fire be God. The man of God looked at God and said, God, I've done according to your word. I've done everything that you've asked me to do. Now I need you to prove me. And when that happened, and God answered him by fire, he went ahead and took out all of the false prophets. Here's what's powerful about that. The man of God, Elijah, told Ahab, you can get up now and eat and drink, because there is a sound of the abundance of rain. Y'all gotta hear what he said, I'ma say it again. Get up from, you don't have to pray no more, whatever you're doing down there, because you married a Jezebel anyway. But you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to work for it, you don't have to sing for it, you don't have to, you don't have to beg me for it, you don't have to make another altar for it. You can actually go on about your business, eat and drink, because the sound of rain is already here. Isn't it funny that he didn't see the rain, but he heard it? 
Isn't it funny that he didn't say, I smell some rain, but he said, there is a sound of an abundance of rain, which lets us know that our new season is what? It's not seen, it's proclaimed. Because the kingdom of God is voice activated. Your new season isn't seen, but it's proclaimed by what you hear from God. God says it, you say it. God says it, you say it. God says it, you say it. You read it, you say it. You see it in the word of God, you say it. That's how that works. But he told his servant, he said, I need you to go over there and see. First note, that's what he did. He went to Mount Carmel. And the Bible said he responded to the word by putting, bowing down and putting his face between his knees and he began to pray. And he told his servant, go and see if there's any rain coming. And the servant said, I ain't seen nothing. Because how many of us believe God for something and we pray and 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 we see nothing? How discouraging. But no, baby, when you get a promise from God, that's what it is. And some of us need to repent for asking God for things and then saying you're on the verge of giving up on God, on the verge of giving up on prayer, on the verge of giving up. Maybe that's why God hasn't answered you. Because how do you fix your lips to say you give up on our maker? How do you fix your lips to say you give up on the one that still sits on the throne? How do you fix your face to say you give up on the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords and the judges of all judges and the physician of all physicians and the lawyer of all lawyers and the teacher of all teachers? How do you fix your mouth? Because he didn't answer a crazy prayer request. He's still God. If you never answer me, you still sit on the throne. If you never answer me, you're still the man of war. If you never answer me, you are still Elohim. If you never answer me, you are still the I am that I am. If you never answer me, you still are the lion of the tribe of Judah. He made that man go back seven times. Can you imagine what that feels like? Checking again and it's still not there. Checking again and it's still not there. You check again and it's still not there. It reminds me of when they walked around Jericho. Can you imagine walking around? Jericho was so impenetrable that people lived in the walls. They had like apartments. People had to go around Jericho seven times. Can you imagine? And some of your faith is so low because you're on your fifth time ready to give up. Baby, the kingdom of God is a numbers game. It's a numbers game, baby. You don't give up. As a matter of fact, you increase your intensity when you go around it the fifth time. You get a little louder when you go around it the sixth time. You begin to dance like David danced when you get to the seventh time. The Bible says he came back and he said, I see a, I see a little clown. You said it was an abundance of rain, but all I saw was a cloud the size of a man's hand. I ain't seen nothing like big, cause an abundance of rain, I expect to see the, cloud, the, the sky littered with clouds. But I didn't see what you said. But that's the thing about our kingdom. We don't live by the world standards. In the world, when you live by flesh, you live by what you see. You live by what you smell, what you taste, what you touch. But because we live by a kingdom, we don't live by anybody, we live by the spirit. Which means that even if we don't see it, if God said it, that's what it is. Does it look foolish and crazy to everybody else? Yes, because you're not a part of my kingdom. And when you're not a part of my kingdom, you don't understand the rules and responsibilities of this kingdom. So if God said you're healed, and you feel a little something funny on your body, it doesn't matter what's there. Your kingdom requires you to live by faith. And when the word says you are healed, when he says, Isaiah 7, 7, it shall not stand and it shall not come to pass. When he said to you, the demonic altars on your bloodline and evil covenants have been broken. When he said to you, affliction shall not rise up a second time. When he says to you, you will not die, but you will live and declare the works of the Lord. When he says to you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. And every time that lists itself against you in judgment, condemn, 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 condemn. It's condemned, baby. This is your inheritance, saith the Lord. 
that thing's gonna obey you. You wanna know why? Because whatever sickness is in your body right now, whatever you feel is Siri activated. Hey Siri, can you turn this off? Yes, because it has to obey you. You haven't been talking to it. Hey, you feel a lump in your body? Oh no, you gotta die by fire. The Bible says no weapon that is formed against you, which means that this thing has already been formed or otherwise well organized. So you go in and say, oh no, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm in right standing with God. And just in case I'm not, I repent for this, this, I repent for doing this, this, I did this, I lied a little bit, I gossiped a little bit, I had sex a little bit, because sometimes you'll get upset. Sex a little bit, I did all of these things just in case. And you know what? Not another thing just in case. I renounce Halloween, I renounce yoga, I renounce tarot cards, I renounce bearing false witness, I renounce murder, I renounce just in case. And just in case the covenant is still there, let me renounce it. I renounce in the name of Jesus. My covenant I made with abortion. I renounce the covenant I made with Halloween. I renounce the covenant I made with yoga. I renounce it just in case, just in case. And then just in case you want to replace it and say, you know what, God, let me just say it one more time. Let heaven and earth record this day that I am in new covenant with you. That the Bible says in the day of my nativity, my cord wasn't cut, which means that there's still a, a cord attached to your bloodline. No, baby, I don't belong to this bloodline no more. I'm a part of this bloodline. So right now, there's a familiar spirit and a monitoring spirit and all of these spirits bothering you and harassing you and molesting you, taunting you. Why do they have access? Because there's still a cord that wasn't cut. And then you say, God, whatever door I open up for the devil to attack my life, I have repented, I have renounced it. I've broken all the evil covenants. And by faith, I tore down every evil altar. If there is any hidden altar or any hidden covenant that I do not know about, I ask that grace takes over. And let the angels of the Lord go back a thousand generations in this bloodline and wash it with the blood. Come on, wash it with the blood. Sanitize it with the blood. Bleach it with the blood. Neutralize it. I want you to see the sin like a, like, like a relaxer. And whenever you leave a relaxer on too long, it starts to burn. And they wash it with neutralizing shampoo to stop the burn. Why well, want you to look at the blood of Jesus Christ like your neutralizing shampoo. And it's gonna go back a thousand generations and whatever is burning up your bloodline with sickness and disease and poverty and confusion and the spirit of fear and torment, the blood of Jesus is gonna go and neutralize, it stops it in its tracks. Not after you do all of that. Because Isaiah 54, 17 is not a promise for everybody. He says it's an inheritance for his people. So if you're in an evil covenant with somebody else, you're not his. Well, we fixed all of that right now. So then you go in and say, now the enemy has no legal right to bother me. The Holy Spirit, who is my counsel of defense, my advocate in the court of law, has now silenced the voice of an accusation. The devil has nothing to stand on on which he can substantiate his claim against me because he's the accuser of the brethren. He stands in the court of heaven and points his finger at you and says, you can't bless her because you know she did this sin yesterday and she hasn't repented for that. Because God is a just God and he lives by spiritual law, he has to abide by that. But no baby, we got a lawyer, a counsel of defense. We have a friend. We have a personal intercessor. His name is the Holy Ghost and he's praying on our behalf. I'm in right standing with you, God. Whatever door I open, shut it. You're the key, Jesus. Lock it up. Don't let nothing else come through. And now after all of that, I declare over my life that no weapon, including whatever just you felt on your body, whatever's going on in your life, no weapon formed against me can prosper. Father, I declare that anything that has well formed itself against my nose, because I was too blind to see it, deform now in the name of Jesus. I command you to wither away into nothing. I command you to go into dust, <sighs> gone in the name of Jesus Christ. You're Siri activated, prophetess Tiffany said. You are activated by my voice and my voice is backed up by the lion. I'm just a lion cub, I'm just a baby cub, but I have the lion of the tribe of Judah. According to Revelations 5.5, 5, that is screaming on my behalf. says after he was finished with that 
the rain came and he saddled up and he said, now at this time, Ahab probably had a day or two head start. And the Bible says that God gave so much speed to Elijah that he still passed him even though this man had a head start. Because how many know when God restores something, he adds speed to it? We don't live a part of the world system. That's why we're supernatural. We're not natural, we're supernatural. We serve a God that breaks protocol. He's a protocol breaker. Well, Tiffany, they said I'm not allowed. Okay, ask somebody else because the rules don't apply to you. The rules don't apply to you. I don't care how it's always been done. It doesn't apply to me. We're not going to do it that way today. Sometimes I do it just for fun to let them know. We're not going to do it that way today. The rules don't apply to me. He said, I'll restore to you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locust stole from you. When you look at, if you Google an image of crops that were destroyed from locust, canker worm, and palmer worm, you'll see how destructive it is. It's nothing left. They do so much damage to land, it's not even funny. He's saying, I'm gonna restore to you the years that poverty and molestation, that incest, that rape, I'm gonna restore to you the years that that bad marriage, that narcissistic relationship, I'm gonna restore to you the years that that betrayal and that hurt and that thing that you can't seem to still pick yourself up from, I'm gonna restore to you the years that that trauma of that person dying and you didn't expect them to die. I'm gonna restore to you the years that the spirit of fear stole from you. I'm gonna restore to you the years. The Lord says, for your shame, for your humiliation, for your embarrassment, when they laughed at you, mocked you, when they said you're not never gonna be, for that shame, I'm gonna give you double. The Lord says, I'm giving you beauty for ashes. For all of the worthlessness you felt, I'm giving you beauty for ashes. I'm giving you the oil of joy, the anointing. I'm giving you a mantle of joy for the spirit of mourning. And I'm giving you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I see heaviness, I see boulder blocks on people's shoulders. It's like heaviness is keeping you down. I see blocks of boulders on your feet. And every time it's like everybody else can hop out of bed and do it, but when you get out of bed, you feel so heavy. It feels like cement has kept your foot. As a matter of fact, I see somebody right now, no idea who this is, but I see somebody has written your name in cursive and they poured, this is in real life, and they poured cement on it as a satanic ritual. And this was to keep you in place, never to move again. And you feel the manifestation, you've been asking God, why does this feel like I'm stuck? Why am I so heavy? No matter how much you pray, it can't get off of you. But God says, he broke it tonight. Because I see the angels of the Lord with a hammer. I see the, it is not my word like a fire and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. That breaketh the cement, satanic ritual in pieces. That breaketh this boulder in pieces. That breaketh the bricks in pieces. Oh, it's broken today, you're free. Y'all keep standing because my message is five minutes long. When I got saved, God gave me my role and responsibilities. He told me I was a prophet of God. He told me I was a teacher. He told me I was apostolic. He also told me I was a mother, a wife, and a daughter. God gave me instructions to look up the definitions of each of these things. And I thought, why? Because they seemed pretty common sense. But as I began to move in all of the offices that I'm in, I began to learn that if you're not clear on who you are, other people who hate you will try to define it for you. If you're not clear on what the Bible says you are, if you're not careful, these people will try to define it for you and you'll be in danger with God for listening to them and not him, amen? So when he told me I walked in the office of a prophet, I looked it up and some of those responsibilities are to admonish and correct his people, which means to rebuke you. 
And a rebuke means a sharp correction. It means I disagree with the standard of Christianity that you're living by because it's not living by the standard on which God set. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus Christ. There's nothing wrong with that. Y'all been cussed out by your baby daddies. You've been fussed out by your mamas. I sit up here and rebuke you in the name of Jesus. All hell breaks loose. Get it together, y'all. Get a backbone and grow up. You can stand a rebuke or three. Y'all was wrong. Another one of my jobs is to warn the body of Christ as a prophet of God. Let me tell you why this is so powerful for you to know this if you're a prophet and not a prophetic person. If you're not sure that you're a prophet and you think that you're a prophetic person, what people that don't read their Bible is going to do to you is say, hey, your job is to edify, comfort, and exhort the body. Why are you talking like that? You should be doing anything other than that. No, baby, prophetic people can do that. Believers with the Holy Ghost can do that. People that operate with the gift of prophecy can do that. But I stand in the office of a prophet. My job is to root out, tear down, destroy, pluck up, and then I'll build you back up and plan. But until then, baby, we got some work to do. You little nasty, you little ugly. You, you, you stink a little bit. We got to deal with that stuff. We have to clear the construction site. We have to anoint the land back together again. We got to uh, plant some more grass there, and then we'll build a beautiful building called the warm. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 23, 18, for who have stood in the counsel of the Lord and have perceived and heard his word, who have marked his word and heard, and heard it. There are many people that are speaking on behalf of a God they refuse to be delivered by. Many people are speaking on behalf of a God they refuse to be delivered by. Mark them. They're not from God. Because who have stood in the counsel of the Lord to really give you the full counsel of God on a matter? So my job is to warn. As a prophet, my job is to give direction and guidance. As a prophet, I encourage you on occasion. As a prophet, my job is to intercede. Not all intercedes, not all intercessors are prophets, but all prophets are intercessors. They got to. As a prophet, my job is to teach. As a prophet, my job is to give counsel. As a prophet, my job is to be a watchman for the body. As a prophet, my job is to advise kings and political rulers, which I've been doing for many years. As a prophet, my job is to foretell future events. As a prophet, my job is to interpret dreams and visions. As a prophet, my job is to remove evil rulers. As a prophet, my job is to prepare for danger. As a prophet, my job is to interpret signs of the time. As a, job, as a to prophet, my job is to test prophetic words and prophecy. He also told me I was a teacher in the body of Christ. And as a teacher, your job is to prepare lesson plans and assess the students' abilities and their strengths and their weaknesses. And it's also to be a role model and a mentor because how many of you know that just because you're not teaching that day doesn't mean that they're not, they're not being taught. So is your life teaching even when you're not teaching? That's the mark of a true teacher. God told me I was apostolic. I was one that is sent. I'm a sent one. He also, I know I'm a mom, but he told me to look it up because he said, you're gonna be a mother to millions, Tiffany. And so I looked up the word mom, and of course, you're a family manager. A mom is a teacher for her children. A mom loves and a mom corrects, and a mom builds up the children to release them into the world. Now, we all know those moms, we call them mama boy moms, when a woman tries to get married to them and they realize like, oh, okay, the mom is actually the son's other wife. That's a wicked woman. That's a woman that's in a spiritually incestuous relationship. If it's you tonight in here or watching online, repent. Because you don't want the heavy hand of God to come upon you because you don't want your son to fulfill his destiny. God will remove you out of this son's life if you are the one holding it up. Repent so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor with your grandchildren and your family. God also told me I was a wife. He told me that well before, I think in 2019, he started speaking to me. And what I thought was fascinating is one of the definitions of the word wife is Ezer, E-Z-E-R. Now this word is given, I don't know, over 20 times in the Bible, but only two times it relates to a wife, a woman. So of course it means helper, but not in a way of a servant or a maid. It means helper in a way of war. 
it means helper in a way of soldier. It means helper in a way of warrior. It means helper in a way of protection. So this, as a wife, your job is to be a watchman over your husband and your family. Your job is to be a warrior wife over your family and over your husband. You gotta study this, it's powerful. Anytime God was called Ezar in the Bible, it was when he went to war and won. And Proverbs 31, I know we hear about it a lot. I want you to spend some time to actually study it because Proverbs 31 is about a woman and a man. She was an entrepreneur. She wore expensive fabrics. She was well and thoroughly planned for her family. Nobody can touch this Proverbs 31 woman. So that was also my definition of a wife. But then he told me, I want you to look up the definition of a child. And this is why he said, many people walk in the office of a prophet, which is what you are. But they get messed up because they leave being a child. And if that's not, if, if you're not careful about that, you'll begin to be Martha and not Mary. You'll begin to always try to serve God and you gotta do something to make God love you again and you gotta tap dance, yes, Ambassador, I'll do it for you, son. Because you think that you have to do something to make God love you again and God is like, no, put down your plate, Martha, and be a little bit more like Mary. When I came, Mary just sat down at my feet and did nothing because that's all I want is your presence. That's all I want is your presence. I don't want nothing else from you. I just want you to sit with me. Don't, don't, don't do anything else. You don't have to work for my love like you've done with everybody else. Just sit here. And God said, Tiffany, if you don't get this right, as a prophet, you're going to suffer from a deep root of rejection. Because when I begin to not answer you, because sometimes God goes silent. I mean, no, he's never silent in the word. Sometimes God goes silent because he needs you to read the word of God because so many of us are hearing other spirits that he needs to make sure you're testing them by the word of God. He said, you'll deal with a spirit of rejection because whenever God stops answering, we go and look for other gods. Can you be my God? Can you be my God? Can you be my covering? Can you be my covering? Can you cover me? Can you cover me? I need, I need a covering because my God's not answering and I need another God in a physical body. Can you cover me? Can you cover me? And because like attracts like, you're going to be attracted to an abuser. So God said, I need you to get this child thing right. It's more important than your office as a prophet. Because if you get this right, you'll be very effective in this generation. So I looked up what the definite, like what, what children do or what their role and responsibility is. And one was, they're very simple. Number one, keep the house clean. We know about physical house, but baby, keep the house clean. Are you cleaning out your heart? Baby, let me tell you something. In this work, you're gonna get betrayed, betrayed, betrayed. I'm telling you, if God don't help me sometimes, I'll be wanting to quit. But when you clean up the house, you say, I forgive them, 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 I forgive them. Sometimes it don't feel like it, because I mean, no, forgiving don't, you still want to put the person in front of the car and run them over. You don't feel like forgiving them, but we don't live off of our feelings. We live by faith. By faith, you forgave. Even if it hasn't caught up to your feelings yet, you forgave. I made a decision to forgive. Maybe my heart hasn't caught up with it yet, but I made a decision. And it, when it come up again and I get the reminder and, and I lose my appetite when I think about the situation, no, the devil's a liar. I decided three days ago to forgive. They're forgiven. They're forgiven. They're forgiven. They're out of my cell memory. The thought about the betrayal is out of my GI tract. I don't lose my appetite anymore. The thought of what they did is out of the memory of my heart. It's not lodged there anymore. It's out of the memory of my brain. It's not, it's like it never happened. Like it never happened. Keep the house clean. You know, when you look at the body, he says we're the body of Christ. You're supposed to take a bowel movement every day. I look at deliverance like your bowel movement. I get deliverance all the time. Once a month, once a quarter, 
all the time. You want to know why? Because I got to keep my house clean. Anytime you see somebody that thinks they're too good or thinks they're too high up to keep getting deliverance is a person you need to run from. I don't care how high up they get. I don't care how famous they get. I don't care how much influence they look like they get. As soon as somebody says, I don't need deliverance, you know how many people serve me? You know how many people come to me? You know how many people I help? Baby, you need to be the first one in line to get some deliverance. Why? Because if not, you'll be impacted and constipated. And we all know how that feels. Keep your house clean as a child to God. You just keep your house clean. That's all he said. Keep your heart pure. Who can ascend unto the hills of the Lord? He who has a... He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. Are your hands clean? Keep your house clean. God, I need to wash my hands with the blood. I need to wash my, my hands been in something that ain't supposed to have been in. Let me wash it with the blood. You know, the blood is bleach. The blood is bleach. It, only difference is it has a 1,000% effective. It's not 99.999. The blood is 1,000% effective. Because I need to ascend into the hills of the Lord. I need you to clean my hands. I'm just trying to keep my house clean, God. You know, I've been telling lies here and there. I over-exaggerate a lot. But I know in order for me to keep on the full armor of God, I need a belt because the armor is too big for me. The armor is too big for it to stay on all by itself. I need a belt to keep my outfit on, but it's called the belt of truth, which means that because of this little bit of lie I've been doing, a lot of bit of lie I've been doing, the over-exaggerating I've been doing, my belt is not there anymore. The armor has fallen down and them arrows, baby, is coming right from my forehead. I feel all of them. The arrows to my back of betrayal, the arrows to my heart, I feel all of them. I repent for that. I'm putting back on my belt because I need to clean my house. A child, number two, asks for permission. Hey, mommy, can I? Pop asked me permission for everything. He knows what the answer is going to be. Mom, can you buy me this off of Amazon? Yes. Why does he ask me? Because he's not the one with the money. Why does he ask me? Because he doesn't have the resources to get there and do it. It's too big for him. Some of us have gotten too big for God. We think we too grown. Not me, baby. He said, who is greatest among us in the kingdom of heaven when the apostles were having an argument within themselves about who was the greatest? Honey, I don't care who you call a general. And I know quite a few generals that I would call generals here on earth. But what I'm saying is, Jesus said, him that come to me like a little child is the greatest among us in the kingdom of God. Why? Because they have childlike faith. The Bible says, without faith, it's impossible to please me. So if you want something from God, you take out $20, but it's called faith. Your $20 is not it's faith. You say, you know what, God, I need this. I'm going to pay you in faith, and you're going to give me what I ask for. Child asks for permission. God, can I go here? I know you want me to go to this country. Can I go? We don't make our own decisions. You just ask God. A child shows the parent love and affection. God, I love you. Daddy, I love you. Can you believe this happened today, God? You are so wonderful. I cannot believe this happened today. You know, God, they tried to play me today, but I thank you for protecting me and being a wall of fire around about me. They better stop playing. I'm going to ask you for mercy for them because I know I'm supposed to do that, but if you want to do something to them, I ain't going to be mad about that neither. Just kidding, Dad. Just kidding. I don't know how you talk to your daddy, girl, but I talk to mine, okay? And a child listens to their parents' advice. Sometimes we go to God, we do all the talking. It's like a monologue in prayer. You talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. And when you're done, you're like, all right, I'm finished. Let me go about doing what I'm doing. He's like, I was going to give you the answer. I just needed you to sit in my presence for 10 minutes. Could you not give me 10 minutes? I, when soon as you were done, you went to sleep. As soon as you were done, you got up and went about your day. As soon as you were done, you took a phone call. But I, I was... I, I was getting ready to answer you, but I'll just wait till the next time you come back in three weeks. And I'll answer you when you give me your time again. Go with me to Matthew 9, 22. Y'all don't sit down yet. Matthew 9, 22. 
the Bible says, while he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him. Let's stop there. Before the man, before the ruler asked Jesus anything, he said he worshiped him. Are y'all getting this? What I find fascinating is that this guy didn't have as much faith as a centurion man had because a centurion man said, hey, you don't even have to come. You just send the word and you'll heal him. He said, I've never seen a man with such great faith. This person didn't have as much faith because he said, I need you to come touch her. She's dead. While he spake these things unto them, behold, there came a certain ruler and worshiped him, saying, My daughter is even now dead, but come lay your hand upon her, and she shall live. Verse 19, And Jesus arose and followed him, and so did his disciples. Verse 20, And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood for twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. 21, For she said within herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. Verse 22, but Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. This is what I think is fascinating. Verse 24, it says, give place for the maid is not dead, but she only sleepeth and they laughed at him and scorned him. Isn't it something that you can believe God for a prayer and still not believe it can be done? I want to talk about the word daughter. We got about three more minutes for my message. But the word daughter means, I looked up the Greek definition of the word daughter, so powerful. It means acceptable to God. Rejoicing in God's peculiar care and protection. Acceptable to God, rejoicing in God's peculiar care and protection. What is peculiar? The care and protection he has for you is unusual. It's special. It's uncommon. It's considered remarkable. Protection also means preservation. God is preserving you for his use. That's why this is a night of rejoicing, because daughters rejoice in God's peculiar care for them and his protection for them. Now, why do I call it the office of a daughter? The office means like a, the office of a prophet is not in the Bible. The word office is not like it's not there. But office simply means a position of authority or service, typically one of a public nature. It means an appointment. It means an administration. It means that this is a function. So when somebody calls themselves an office of a prophet, that means that that's the function they operate in. When I call myself an office of a daughter, the reason I do that is because of the nature of my work. And by proxy of what I do, you know, we read during the fast how in the book of Acts, Fortune, which is the chapter, when the men said that they were gonna fast and not eat until they put a curse on themselves to say that they would not eat or fast or eat or drink anything until Paul was dead. Until Paul was dead. Do you know how many people are praying right now against you? And, uh, Acts 23, 12. The Bible says these men put a curse upon their head and said, bound themselves to a curse saying, we will not eat or drink anything until Paul is dead. Because how many of you know that fasting doesn't just belong to Christians? Fasting is like gravity. So whether you're a Christian, a Satanist, a Buddhist, or Muslim, what goes up has to come down. Because gravity works for you no matter who you are. It's a law. Well, fasting is also a law. That's why Satanists do it more than you do, because they understand the spiritual principles of it. They get a lot of, they got a lot accomplished by fasting. When they turn on their plate, I knew a man that, he was a voodoo priest. He's a prophet now. Had a radical encounter with God. He was very high up in what he did. And he said that they would fast and pray every day against all the churches. He said that he would just watch them shut down, shut down, shut down. And I got a little discouraged and I said, well, what? How, how does a church not? Because my question to him was, why do you pray all day? And I say pray all day, I mean pray all day. So why do you pray all day? He said, because I worked on the other side. And 
when you work for the kingdom of darkness, you take it a little bit more seriously than you do if you're a Christian who is green to all of this. Christians think that none of this exists. Christian that ain't been, never did nothing, you're like a suburb who went to the city. Green. He says, if you knew how much we fasted and prayed, how much damage we did to Christians, you would pray more too. I said, how, did, how does any Christian get over this? He said, oh, we could never touch a house that prayed. Because you can't fake prayer. You can fake it on the mic. You can fake it on YouTube. You can fake it on the stage. But baby, you can't fake a prayer life at home. You can't fake a prayer life against evil altars. You can't fake a prayer life against voodoo priests. They ain't gonna find out when they find out you're impenetrable. He said because they would labor against the house for so long and not be able to touch it, they would get exhausted and say, let's go to the next one. I don't even know what the point of all that was, but you know, it's going somewhere with it. It was good. Huh? Thank you. Well, that's just what I want to say is we was in the office. But let me give you an example. This is an example God gave me years ago. Because some of you feel like it's heavy what you're carrying right now. Like too heavy. The Lord said, I want you to cast your care on me. And I don't think we take that scripture too seriously enough. Because to cast something means to throw it. It's like when you take a fishing pole and you go like this, and you shoot it at the water. But this is what he gave me as an analogy. He took me in a vision and I saw myself as a little girl with pigtails. And somebody gave me a carton of eggs to hold, but I was excited. So now, instead of being able to rejoice as a daughter and dance, I now have to walk like this because I don't want to get in trouble. And I'm only five, so how much can you expect from me? The carton's too heavy. And every step you get, I get a little nervous and probably fear creeps in because I don't want to mess this up. And it gets heavier and heavier. And sometimes you wobble because you're excited still. This is the little girl. You got, you're excited. You want to dance around. You want to jump around. You want to sing for joy. Somebody just turn on your song. You want to dance to that? You can't. And then sometimes it feels like it's going to fall. And now the rejoicing you were supposed to be in has turned into a burden. And in this vision, God said, now hand me the carton. And whatever is on your carton, your financial issue, your marriage, whatever is on your carton, you give it to your father. And as a little girl with pigtails, I was then able to dance. I was able to roll around on the floor. I was able to do a cartwheel. I was able to twirl around. I was able to dance. Why? Because my father's carrying the burden. My father's carrying the burden. I just got to get to the other side, but he has the carton. My father's carrying the burden. My father's carrying the burden. I don't have nothing to worry about because it's none of my business. We just got to get it. We just got to get to the other side, but it's none of my business because he has the burden. I've cast my care on him. And so tonight, you're going to cast your cares on God. Tonight, you're going to cast your care on God. I heard the Lord say, as you dance, as you scream, as you rejoice, the answer will meet you at your house.
We are a living testimony. Uh. Tonight, we are fully persuaded that what he had promised, that he will perform it. I'm gonna say it again. Tonight, we are fully persuaded that what he had promised, he will perform it. Okay, okay. Let's see how much you're gonna eat this scroll. We are fully persuaded that what he had promised, he will perform it. I am fully persuaded that what he had promised that he will perform it. He promised to save my family. He will perform it. He promised to see me through college. He will perform it. He promised that my name would be upon every street, every corner. He will perform it. He promised that I'd be the head and not the tail. He will perform it. I am persuaded that what he had promised, that he will perform it. Do I have any persuaded people in here tonight? Are you persuaded by the word? Are you persuaded by what he said to you? Are you persuaded that you are healed? That by his stripes you were already healed? Let Romans 4 and 21 prophesy to you that I am fully persuaded that what he, not a man, not a system, not a homie, not a hookup, but I am fully persuaded that what he had promised, I can fly off of that right there. I'm a Bible baby, I can fly off of that right there. This is your prophetic word, that we will be a generation that is fully persuaded that what God has promised, that he will perform it. So Father, we receive the word. Lift your hands now. We receive your promises. For all your promises in you are yes and amen. And we are fully persuaded that you will perform it in our lifetime. We will not wait another day. We will not await another decade. We will not be old and gray haired waiting for a promise that you made to us, but we will see it and we will enjoy it with our own eyes because I am fully persuaded. Yes, it is. 
is. Yes, you remembered. Yes, you have. You have remembered. Yes, you have. You remembered us. Yes, it is so. It is so. It is so. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. For yes, I am the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and I've roared in the beginning, and I roar now, says the Lord, and even I roar in the end, for I am causing my strength to move through you as I am, says the Lord. For I am he that has come, and I am he that is on the inside of you. And so even in this moment, that which has come against you has come against me, said the Lord. And that Yah would have set itself up against Tamiya, against you, has set itself up against me. And now you shall hear my roar not just behind you but you will hear it from the inside of you i'm roaring through you i'm roaring through you i'm roaring through you saith the lord oh, oh, Release your roar right where you at. Release your roar over your city. Release your roar over the earth. Release your roar over the nation. Release your roar over your bloodline. Release your roar over your bloodline. Release your roar over your bloodline. And I declare your children, 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 shall be. Roar out of your belly, let rivers of the living water flow. I said, Roar, Judah, roar, Judah, roar, Judah, roar. Release your roar, release your roar, release your roar, 
hammer shattering the pieces. Oh, oh just like a hammer shattering the pieces. Woo. Oh, just like a hammer shattering the pieces. Yeah. Just like a hammer shattering the pieces. Oh, just like a hammer shattering the pieces. Yeah. My praise, my sound, my victory, my sound, 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 my praise, my sound, my victory. Sam! 
a free man Victory looks like a humble man Woo. Victory looks like a grateful man Victory looks like a thankful man I am the evidence that he made me victorious Victorious God Victorious Victorious God You are victorious Victorious God you are victorious, Lord. Victorious, God. You make me a praise in the earth. You make me a song in the earth. You make me a sound in the earth. You make me a praise in the earth. Come on, release that sound. Woo! Woo! I am what victory looks like. That's why I won't let a rock cry out for me. That's why I won't let a rock cry out for me. I'm what victory looks like. I'm what redemption looks like. What do you say and do? I know what victory is. You know what victory is. Victory has a sound. Ah, ah. It's louder than my enemies. It's louder than what surrounds. Me, it's louder than what's staring at me in the face. It's louder, it's louder than every distraction. It's louder, it's louder, it's loud, it's loud, it's loud. that sound in this place Woo. Oh, oh. victory is my place Woo. victory is where Unstoppable, unstoppable, 
in the place of victory, unmovable, unstoppable. In the place of victory, unmovable, unstoppable. In the place of victory, I'm unmovable, unstoppable. And in the words of Tiffany, I'm unblackballable. In the place of unity, oh, I'm unblackballable. In the place of victory, I am unblackballable. In the place of victory, I want you to lift up your worship to the Father. Just take this moment, God, to honor you, Lord. Ooh. Just take this moment. That love of the Father. Woo. Oh! 
that's where I'm made in time with you in time with you that's where I'm safe in time with you in time with you that's where I'm framed in time with you in time with you that's where I'm framed in time with you in time with you that's where I'm framed that's where I'm framed that's where I'm framed so clean my hands and purify Just the song I'm saying, Lord, holy, take my life as a sacrifice.
burning flames, burning embers, burning wands, fire baptized, full of the Holy Ghost, and fire with evidence, not just of speaking in tongues, but evidence of power, people of power, people of presence, not just words, but the kingdom of God is not in word only. The kingdom of God is not in word only, but in power. Lift up your voice. Oh, I feel the release. I feel power being transacted in the room. I feel a supernatural transaction take. supernatural God the God that comes inside the God that comes in miracles the God that comes in wonders and I know you came to the epicenter because it was coming by God but I'm here to let you know that it's an open portal in this room It's an open portal. Come on. It's an open, woo, an open portal. Oh, a place where the impossible becomes possible. Oh, when the crooked places are made straight. Woo, oh, when the ailed bodies where disease and infection oh and viruses dry up at the name of jesus lift your voice come on come on come on come on come on the god of transaction
Try. 
Sing it out. Take away my shame and give me double, double. You'll take away my pain. I don't know, these songs just come from the Lord and give me double, double. 
You take away my shame Woo. And you give me double, double Oh, you take away my pain And you will give me double, double You will take away
Indeed it won't be long Ooh, Indeed it won't be long Indeed it won't be long oh, It's gonna happen so fast Your head's gonna swim Everywhere you look, there are people there. She, I'm blessing. Everywhere you look, there are people there. She, I'm blessing. Everywhere you look, there are people there. She, I'm blessing. Everywhere you look, everywhere you look, everywhere you look, everywhere you look. Everywhere you look, there are people blessing. Oh, blessing, cause the curse is broken. And the drought is home. Come on, lift up those voices. Come on, just for a second. No music, just the voices. Woo. Come on, give God glory. 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 That the curse has been broken. I'm not talking about when you walk out of the epicenter. I'm talking about while you worship. It broke. While you rejoiced. It broke. Come on. The drought is over. Give God glory. Come on. Give God glory. Come on, give God glory. Give God glory. <laughs> give God glory. Give God glory. That your ladder will be greater than the former. Come on. I don't care what you see before you came in the door. Oh, it's considered former because greater is following me. Greater is with me. Come on. Greater. Oh, we give God glory. Let there be the sound of rejoicing. Let there be the sound of rejoicing that a God we serve has not failed in his performance. He has a track record of victory after victory after victory and you are living proof of, oh my God, you are living proof of his victorious power. You are living proof of his redemption. You are living proof of the power of the blood. You are living proof of the power of his presence. You are living proof that I, oh, You are living proof. You are the evidence in the earth. You are a living testimony. And as the apostle Paul said, I am a living epistle. Read of me. 
and read of his works. Read of me and read about his power. Oh, when men read you, do they know of his power? When men read you, do they know? Oh, about deliverance. When men read you, do they see healing? Oh, when men read you. Oh, come on, shout. Make me a living epistle. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Come on, shout. Shout. Come on, somebody's walking out with a new tongue, with a new jump, with a new shout. Come on, baby. With a new sound, with a new praise. Oh, somebody, oh, somebody's leaving. Oh, I see that look dried up. Oh, it's gone. Check your body, baby. Oh, get that blood test done. Oh, I see, I see. sing for 30 seconds because I don't even know if y'all know the words. And I'm out of breath, so I'm going to mess it up. But I'm a little girl singing to my father. You know when you worship, I don't sing to you. I sing to my father and you just have the privilege to watch. When she decreed that the curse was broken, I heard a song and I began to sing it. 
and say, yeah, he has done it for us. Yes, he's done it for us. Hey, he's done it for us. Not so, so wonder Jesus they do. Hey, he's done it for us. Hey, he's done it for us. Hey, he's done it for us. Not so, so wonder. I want you to look at God and say, Yes, you've done it for us. For us, yeah, you've done it for us. Not so, so wonderful. One more time, come on. He's done it. Yeah, you've done it for us. Now y'all know I have a newfound love for the dance ministry. Cause when I was in South Africa with my sister Victoria Renzi, she gave me two flags. She made me twirl around on the stage and I realized how out of shape I was. And I was in Alabama and my sister Dee and Jeremiah found these conference. And I saw all of these dancers dancing on the stage. And I tell you, I felt the Holy Ghost and I said, I have to have them at the next cover by God. So I just really want to quickly, everybody come on out. Look at these young girls dancing for God. Can we give a shout of praise? And little man. So I just want to introduce it really quick. These two their own dance team ministry, but I just want you to say your names and tell them where you're from. I'm Courtney. I'm from Houston, Texas. And the name of our ministry is Fire and Glory. I'm Candace, and I live in Dallas, Texas. And we'll take one, one, one voice. Tell us where y'all from and what's the name of your dance ministry. Our dance ministry is called Connected Glory Cares, and we're from Augusta, Georgia, CTC Strong. So I don't want y'all to leave yet. Listen, don't leave yet, because we're going to take an offering real quick. Do not leave yet. I got one more thing, but it's not going to be long. But y'all know I don't normally ask for an offering. We need a bigger spot. Can we agree? The ticket sold out in 12 minutes and they're free. We need a bigger spot. So I need you to sow into what I call good ground. Covered by God is good ground. And I need you to take out something. And I want you to give, you can go to coveredbygod.co, click on the giving, sow your seed tab, you can give there. They'll put up the text to give number. Cash app is dollar sign, millions conference, all of that goes to Covered by God. That is the only cash app we have. Everything else is fraud. It is not me. So make sure it says dollar sign millions conference if you're giving via cash app. But I want everybody to sow a seed and I consider this good ground. Now we're gonna close, but not without a, a prayer, a prophetic release over you. How many of you know that it wasn't just my birthday in the month of August? But there is a man by the name of Reverend James Solomon, my grandpa. Hey, grandpa. How many of you have read Deliverance from Demonic Covenants and Curses? This is the author of Deliverance from Demonic Covenants and Curses. You can go grab the book on Amazon, a life-changing book, but he gave his life to Christ 45 years ago, August 1st, 1978. So we celebrate you, we love you, we thank you, and I would like for you to close this out. He's been here the whole time. 
So he's like, you tricked me to cut. I wanted him to come and give a release, but please just release us out, whatever the Holy Ghost. And after he's done, we're finished. Amen. Wow. Come on, put your hands together. I give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Anyway. Um, first, I want to give glory to God and I thank God for my granddaughter, yeah. Tiffany Montego Mary. And I want to thank God for every one of you that have uh, contributed so much for my books. You have been a blessing. And what we have done is that we are promoting God's kingdom. And because you are one of us, you will receive your reward in Jesus' name. I don't want to waste uh, your time. I have a simple prayer that God laid in my heart. And uh, after this prayer, you will never forget today. I say, you will never forget today. I say, after the prayer, you will never forget today. Turn around to somebody and say, I got it. Say, I got it. Turn to another person and say, I got it. All right, let's put our hands together one more time. I really, you, you make this place colorful. We really celebrate you and I thank you very much. It's a wonderful celebration. I, I, I don't even remember the year until my granddaughter sent the messages out on social media that uh, 1978 to now is uh, 45 years ago that I gave my life to Christ. I'm funny. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I know someone you say, mm, I wasn't born then. That's all right. I know some of you are saying, no, I was not born yet then. That's all right. And, but I thank God again. You know, God do things mysteriously. You agree? Say yes. And she also reminded me, remember my... I also gave my life to Christ in August. She did. Am I also August? So I can really, really agree with God that she's my granddaughter. Amen. So thank you all for celebrating this wonderful occasion for all of us. By the way, give it to all these musicians. These are special people. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I don't want to keep you longer, but you don't want to miss this prayer. That guy there worth a million. That guy on the drums, oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of my granddaughter, thank you. You have made this program a glorious one. Of course, I know you well. Come on, somebody celebrate him. Well, he's a good friend. I know him too. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. Where is the, my delicate worshiper? I know you. Oh, she's hiding there. Somebody say, yeah! All right, thank you for celebrating us, including all those who have come to make this uh, program a glorious one. But you will not live without the blessings. I want to give you just one scripture and then we're going to be praying. And after my prayer, I'll let you go. Um, if you like to sit, fine. If you like to stand, fine. We're still praying. In Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. I know in our generations, we don't carry Bible again. May God have mercy on us. Can somebody say Amen. I say, I know in our generations, we don't carry Bible again. Is that right? May God have mercy on us. 
Do you have it on your device? If you have your Bible on your device, say, do, wave it, let me see. If you do not have the Bible on your device, go and download it. May I tell you, you can download it free. Every Christian must have Bible on your device if you don't have it in your hand. You have it, say, yes, I do. Yes, I do. All right, I want to read Joshua chapter 6. And when we read that, we're going to do the prayer, and then I'm going to let you go. But this is very important. Joshua chapter 6, verse number 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Somebody answer with me. Say, Joshua, see. Hmm. The problem with us is, number of us, we look, but we don't see. We're going to pray just one single prayer here today. Many people are here today, they come to look, but they don't see. You can be standing with your spouse, the future spouse, but because you don't see, you just look, you will look and you'll go away. You can be in the midst of breakthroughs of your life. If you don't see, you just look, you can go. Today, I will see. Turn to somebody, neighbor, see. Mm. Look up here. I, I'm not preaching, I just want to, to get this point. The Bible said, Joshua, see. Listen to me. God did not say, Joshua, look. No, you're not getting my story. God didn't say, Joshua, look. Because you can look and you don't see. So many of us have looked around the nations and we never see nothing. You looked around churches for your spouse, for the person you will marry, but you don't see. When you look and you don't see, you are a loser, you are still blind. Today the story is about to change. Turn around to somebody and say, I'm about to see. What's the name of your friend standing by yourself? Call the name of your friend say, friend, see. Can I hear amen? No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Let me hear a louder amen. amen. Since, since I promised not to preach, I just want you to do the prayer point. Are you listening to me? How many of us know that many, many times you can look and you don't see? Oh, are you listening to me? You can look with your eyes open and you don't see. A lot of people come to a congregation like this. We gather together. They look around, but they see nothing. Be careful that those who are closer to prophetess here will not just be a looker. If people just look, they will not see the miracles. Oh, are you getting my point? Some people just look. They don't see. You don't want to agree with me? Go home later on and read the book of Luke chapter 24 on your own and see what happened when Jesus resurrected. And on the journey, two people among the disciples, they started discussing. Uh, well, we're talking about Jesus of Nazareth who resurrected. He promised to rise again, but we're still trusting that we have not seen him. Some ladies saw him and Jesus joined them. Jesus joined two of them. And Jesus asked them, what are you guys discussing? They said, oh, are you a stranger? When you look and you don't see, everything you see looks strange. You will call God Almighty a stranger because you don't see. Yo, no, 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 no. Somebody is not getting my story. Turn around to somebody here, I must see. Before I leave here, I must see clearly. Mm, I got you. Now, before we pray, so these people were walking with Jesus. Do you have a man around here? Well, let's borrow somebody. Come on. Don't be afraid. And so, no, two people. Borrow the second person. Now, they were going on a journey and they were discussing 
about Jesus who died and resurrected. Hear me. And Jesus joined them. I said, yes, what are you guys discussing? And they said, are you a stranger in Israel? Don't you hear the story of the one who came from heaven, a son of God, he was killed and was buried. And Jesus said, eh? They said, no, are you a stranger here? Oh my God, you will not call your help a stranger. You will not call your own God stranger. You will not call your own solution, your own solution. Solution, answer to prayer, they call it stranger. It was the answer to prayer, but they call him what? Answer me. I said it was the answer to the insult. What do they call him? It was the answer to prayer. What do they call him? It was the only one they were talking about. What do they call him? You can come to this place, see the miracles, see the wonders, see the anointing from the woman of God, and go back home because they came to look, they don't see. Turn around to somebody and say, I must see. Before I leave here. So, conversation continue. Let's go. And they say, no, about Jesus of Nazareth. Say, uh, he, he's a mighty prophet. And, uh, is that not what you are discussing? Go ahead with your discussion. And then they were talking. And then when they got to his spot, Jesus said, wait, 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 wait. Uh, don't you remember that you were told that he will rise? Don't you know that he has said it, the Bible has spoken it. The Bible says he opened the scripture for them and narrated the entire Bible. And yet they don't see. They are still blind. Because they look, but they don't see. If you go around looking, you will not see. Are you hearing me? Some look around in churches, they don't see. Some had here tonight, they have looked around, they don't see. Can I hear you on top of your voice? Oh God, open my eyes that I might see. Say, Father, open my eyes. So, Jesus opened the Bible, spoke the scripture to them, the Bible says he said it from the prophets until resurrection. And when Jesus finished, they still don't see. Are you hearing me? All right. There were natural eyes. We have natural eyes, which is physical eyes. There were mental eyes, mental sight, which is the mind sight. There were spiritual sight, which is important. Now, if you don't have spiritual sight, you won't understand what we're discussing here. You will look around and look and look and find fault and tell some story about my daughter. You, you just don't see anything good. You just wonder, why am I here tonight? Because you can look, but you don't. Can I hear somebody say, God, open my eyes. Wait, 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 wait. So after that, they still don't see. Jesus taught them the scripture. Now, this is becoming double, triple portion of blindness. One, physically, they were blind. Two, mentally, they were blind. How do I say that? Their minds were blind. Even when they had the voice of Jesus, they don't recognize it. Their minds were blind. I'm not talking about you. I mean their minds were blind. Can I hear amen? amen? Now the third one. Jesus explained to them and told them the story and yet they don't see. Now he now took them. Let's go. He now took them. They got into the village and Jesus said, okay, let's eat. And Jesus now prayed until the prayer were prayed, they were still blind. Today, after today's prayer, as we leave this place, the Lord will open your eyes. Remember what I said? One can have physical eyes. Look around and they don't see. Some people have mental eyes, which is the mind. They still don't see. 
But when God opens your spiritual eyes, both of the two other eyes will begin to see. Before you leave today, you will begin to see. Lift up your voice wherever you say, Father, open my eyes. There was one of my young ladies that had been praying for who to marry for many years. And they were in the same church. I am their pastor. I happen to be the pastor who groomed them, all of them. I grew all, the, all of them up. Mary and Stephen. Mary was my prayer leader. Stephen was my evangelism team leader. They were all under my ministry. And they started praying when it comes to the time to marry, they started believing God. Oh, God, give us husband. Oh, God, give me wife. They cried and prayed and fasted because I don't appoint a wife for a man. Neither do I appoint a woman for a man. I don't do it. That's not my job. That is the job of the Holy Spirit. I'll let them pray. Come and tell me what you see, and I'll bless them. So they started praying. Then it came to a time, Mary was tired and said, Sir, I don't know how difficult this is. I've been crying and crying to God, and I don't hear nothing. God, please help me. I don't know what is going on. What is the matter? Why can't I find who to marry? I said, let me pray for you. I prayed for her. Then, the Stephen, the boy, they're all my boys and my girls. That one came also, Daddy, this is becoming difficult. I prayed all kind of prayer. I did everything. I said, okay, can I pray for you? Then God just told me one day, change the prayer point. I said, what? I said, yeah, change the prayer point. Then I lay my hands on them. God tell them, Lord, open my eyes. Help me see. Then I prayed the same prayer for Mary. So I left them. After a while, you know it's the man that will come first. Stephen came and said, sir, I don't believe in this. I said, what? No, it can't be God. I said, tell me what it is. No, I don't think it's God. Why will it be Mary? I said, tell me, what do you see? I saw Mary. I said, okay, if that's what you see, let's pray about it. I kept quiet. Mary also went to her own prayer. When Mary came to me and said, no, in Jesus' name, I can't sue it. In Jesus' name. <laughs> and I told her, what do you can sue? What do you cancel, Mary? He said, no, it can't be, it can't be Stephen. No, Stephen, we grew up together here. No, no, in Jesus' name, I reject it. She rejected it, but today they have four cute kids. Because, listen, listen, listen. Sometimes you can hang around people for many years. You can look at them, but you don't see. Now, the final thing I want to say about that passage, we're going to be praying now. I don't know how long Joshua had been praying concerning Jericho. The scripture did not explain to us how many years, how long he's been praying to possess Jericho. But there is this particular verse, verse 2. God said, Joshua, see. Now, what I want you to understand in that passage is this. God didn't say, Joshua, look. He said, Joshua, what? See. And when God release a command like that, a miracle is about to happen. Somebody is not getting my story. Wait, 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 wait. Let me, no, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on. Let me tell you, let me tell you. God did not say, Joshua, if you look around, you may see. No. He commanded him. Her, him. He said, Joshua, see. And when God speaks like that, a miracle is about to happen. There is somebody here today. The commandment to see is coming to your sight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said the decree for you to see. God is about to release it. Some of you don't know the business to do. You don't know what to go into in business. You don't know how to succeed. You hang around blessings, but you don't know how to tap them because you are blind. Wait, 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 wait. Can I tell you this before I close? I promise him how I'm not going to preach. Now, listen, listen. Let, let's assume that you need just one million dollars. How much do you need? One million. Come on here, come on. How much? How much? How much? One million dollars. Okay. Now, and I, I, I wanted to give her one million dollars. Don't climb. Don't, that's okay. I know you want to jump up here. Stay there. Now, 
Now, wait, wait, wait. And I, I have in mind to give her one million dollars. And I go to where she lives. The lights are off. No light. And I place one, one million dollar on her table. And there is thick darkness. And there's no how she can see the money. When I ask her on the phone, did you receive the money? What is she going to say? No, sir. Why? There was no money there. Was there one million dollar that I brought? Why did she say I did not receive it? Was it because the money was not there? No. Get, was it because the money was not there? Why was it that he did not pick up the money? She cannot see. Are you hearing me? Wait, 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 wait. Do you know she may look around in the room? Look. Someone say, look. She may look around, but until she see, she will not have the miracle. Some of you are just lookers. You look around everywhere, and yet you come back with nothing. The story is about to change for you. Lift up your hands and say, Father, open my eyes. I am concluding now. Can I tell you something? People all over the world have been blessed with this young lady here. Wait, 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 wait. I'll have to bring you in here. All over the world, somebody was talking to me two days ago from Africa. I said, this woman has blessed me. Listen to me. And yet, the people that are closer to this young lady, they can look, but they don't see. Are you hearing me? Get my story. Are you hearing me? I wish God can show you that this is an instrument of your breakthroughs and miracles. But some people look, they don't see. Can I hear amen? amen? And the worst case is this. Do you know my book was written in 1987? Published in the USA in 2006. There were members of the church where I pastor who had been with me since 2000 before the book was published who looked at the book they don't see you can look at this woman most especially when you are close to prophets or pastors or bishop you just look and you don't see if you can ask God to open your eyes and show you what God to me this is a precious woman to me to me very precious, I tell you to her. Because she's an instrument of God. If God opens your eyes, you can come around her forever. If you are blind, you will not see. Thank you. Lift up your hands, say, Father. Open my eyes. Now, I'm closing with that. Listen, that's the prayer we're going to pray. Are you ready to pray that prayer? Some people can start looking and they don't see. I want to pray. God said, Joshua, see. You know what happened? Immediately God said that. I think the cataract that was preventing Joshua to see before fell off. What do I call it? Cataract. What do you call cataract? Huh? The, the veil that was preventing Joshua to see fell off. When God said, Joshua, see, that's a command. It is what? It is a command. And a command is meant to be obeyed. When God speak it out, every cataract that prevented Joshua from seeing fell off. Every veil, spiritual veil, preventing Joshua to move forward fell off. Joshua, see, from that moment, God did not say, I will give you Jericho. He said, it, it has been in your hand for long, but you don't see it. Joshua, see, I have given you, not I will give you. Read that portion on your own later. I have given you. Some of you have received a miracle from God, but you are still blind. Some of you, God has answered your prayer, but you are still blind. 
Some of you, God has given you what you are calling for, but you are still blind. Some of you, the answer. Let me say this one and close. I was preaching in London. And in, in, in that program, there was a lady who came for prayer. Let me not use the same person. She came to the revival because of what God was. Can I have a man? Sure. Yeah, that's my cameraman. Now, so this man came to church sure. on his own. Which language? Can you tell Zuri to keep quiet? This man came to church on his own. This woman came to church on her own. And then my topic that day was a tempting topic. Tempting. It was a big temptation. You know the topic? Huh? <laughs> Excuse me, my case is urgent. That was the topic. Excuse me, my case is urgent. So this woman, this man was around about 40 something. The lady was about 30 something, almost 40. And so when I say, excuse me, excuse me, my case is urgent. Ah, on their own, differently. They don't know each other. This one started saying, no, this is about me. The lady said, no, this is my prayer point. By the time I said, let us pray, after the sermon, both of them were boiling inside. This one was like, oh my God, today is my day. This other lady was saying, no, God must do it. When I said, you know, sometimes there are some prayers that doesn't require sophistication a sophisticated type of prayer. You know the type of prayer I will tell you to pray tonight before you leave? What type? No? I told you before. Violent prayers. In the, from the days of John the Baptist, the prayer system has changed. It is now violent. And it's only by force. And those who will take here are the what? The violent people. So this lady just said, Father! And slap the man. No, not intentionally. It was the, the zeal of that prayer. Please don't slap anybody here tonight. Thank you. So it was the zeal and the, Father! And he slapped the man. And when you slap somebody, you open your eyes. And for the first time, you see eyeball to eyeball. I'm sorry, sir. I don't intentionally want to. I'm sorry. Uh, from I'm sorry, that's how God finalized the, the rest of the story. That man was standing there for her until God opened the eyes of the lady and the man. Did you hear me? They got married later and they have three kids now. Listen. Is anybody ready for a miracle? You are standing with your one million dollars around you. You're not getting the story. You are standing with that breakthrough around you. God answered already. He said, Joshua, See, why are you still crying to me? Joshua, why are you crying? See, I have given into your hand. How can you do this prayer since yesterday, since, since, since 7 p.m. until now, and you're not getting anything? No, 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 no. Joshua, see, I have given into your hand. What? Jericho. Hear me. We're going to pray now. What do I call that type of pronouncement from God? A commandment, a decree. Joshua, see whatever has been holding on to your sight in the past. I speak as God. Joshua, see everything preventing you from locating your breakthrough from this moment as God. I pronounce that's what God told Joshua. See, I don't know what is it that has been preventing you from marching into your Victoria, into your promised land. Today you will see. One prayer point. Lift up your hand. Say, Father. Open my mental eyes. <laughs> are you ready? You see, the, the Bible said the minds of some people are blind. So therefore they couldn't see. Some people have the physical sight problem. They couldn't see. They look. But now, when we do the spiritual prayer, which is the spiritual eye opening, both of them will open at the same time. I would like to pray. Okay. Father, Father open, the open the eyes of my mind. When? 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 
Win! Win! Father! Open the eyes of my mind! Now! 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 Pray, 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 pray! Ah! Open! 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 Father! Amen. Amen. Maybe what God wanted to do for you in life is in the hand of this young lady. But because you are blind, you don't see. You look at her. Some look down on her. You know, she doesn't, she's not as big as I am. And you look at her and say, I thought when I would see prophetess, uh, whatever, I thought she's going to be somebody like, is that the woman? Hey, well, if you are a good looker, you will look and go. But if you ask God to open your eyes, you will see what God bestowed on this great instrument. And you will tap into it. The problem we have is that those who are closer to her, they become the losers. Why? Because they look and they don't see. I can see what put in you, man. I honor this wonderful woman because I know what God put inside of her. The day you begin to see is the day you begin to get your miracle. I said the day you begin to see is it? Oh, no, no. You're not getting my story. No matter how close you are, did you not hear me that my book that was printed, published 2006, there were people with me from 2000 before I published the book who see, they look at the book but they don't see. Look at the many, many, many testimonies coming from all over the world. Every day I receive testimonies. The book is now going on audio. Can I inform you? They just call me. A company just call me. We're doing the audio of your book. Please approve it. Sign it. Let, we will do it. And I said, no, I'm not. They said, we'll pay you. Wait, wait. Wait, 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 wait. You think I will not honor this woman? I know what I see in her. You don't see it. Listen. Secondly, a French company call me and say, want to trans translate the book into French. I don't know them. I don't know them. I've never, they said, no, we will. I said, wait. They said, no, we are not waiting. We will pay. We will pay for the publication. We will also pay you royalty. Ah. Just last week, I was praying for group, uh, Bible group book studies. They invite me on, on Zoom to pray for them. While the prayer was going on, three of them were giving testimonies right on the spot. People were getting foaming, falling, miracles were happening on the Zoom and listening to me. But the people, some people see, look at the book from 2000. They look at it. It's on the table there in our church every day. People look at it but they don't see lift up your hands. I pray you will not be the type that will just look and look and go away without seeing. The Bible says, Joshua, see. Somebody say, I received that commandment to see. Say, I received that decree to see. I received that commandment. I can hear you. I receive it to see. I received that decree to see. When? 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 Listen. That's the last part of my prayer and I'll let you go. Sir, ma, the battle we are facing is the battle of blindness. We have everything in the U.S. Anytime I go abroad to preach, people will look at us and say, ah, you are from U.S. Ah, we like to come to U.S. And then you find out people in U.S. here trying to go to another place. They look around they are blind. They don't see nothing. This Georgia is rich. But some people want to leave Georgia to someone else because they don't see. Ah! 
the blindness will go. I decree by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, every spiritual cataract that has prevented you from seeing your miracles, your breakthrough, I command them to disappear now. In the name of Jesus, say, Father, I receive a decree. Listen, Father, I receive the decree to see clearly now. Father, I receive a commandment to see clearly now. I receive a decree to see my husband, my wife, my breakthrough, my finances, my success, my elevation. Now, 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 now. Amen. I pray for you and I'll let you go. Until God Almighty sent a decree to Joshua. Joshua never saw it that God has handed over the city. Joshua see. In other words, God didn't say look around. Uh, 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 uh. The problem you have is there is something blocking your view. You don't see. Joshua, Joshua, see. I have given, not I will give. I have given, not I have given only. Jericho, into your hand. What? Where is it? Until your eyes are open, you don't know what God has given into your hands. Is anybody ready to pray? Yeah. Now, before you, close, before you go, place your hands here. Say, Father, Father. I receive a commandment from the throne of grace to see clearly now. Now, on top of your voice, don't do me psychedelic type of prayer. Do a kind of madness prayer. Do it as if you don't know what is good. Don't slap anybody anyway. But just pray it today as heaven is coming down to slap your face and see. Are you hearing me? Ma'am, listen to this testimony. After today, in the next uh, covered, by, covered by God program, you will have to give your testimonies. No. All right. Before then, you will have to write this woman of God. Say, hey, I started to see. I succeeded in business. I had my breakthroughs. I'm now with my husband. A miracle is taking place. I find my spouse. I find my wife. I can see now. I can see now. I can see now. In Jesus' name. Place your hand here and let me pray. Your eyes on your face. Say, Father. That's not the way I said it. Father. In the name of Jesus. I receive a decree. From the throne of grace. To see. Now. Father. I receive a commandment. For the throne of grace to see my breakthrough, to see my finances, to see my miracle, to see my husband, to see my wife. Now, nah. pray, 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 Father. I receive, 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 I receive. Somebody is receiving it. Somebody is getting it. Somebody is getting it. Somebody's eyes are open. Somebody's eyes are open. Somebody's eyes are open. Receive it. Receive it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Receive it. Receive. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Receive it. Receive it. Yes, 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 yes. God is removing the veil. 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 Yeah! You can see now. You can see. 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 Now! Nah. 
Thank you, Father. Yes, 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 yes. She can see now. She can see. She can see. She can see. She can see. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. The door of that breakthrough is open. She can see that financial miracle. She can see. Yes, that project. That project. That project. That project. She can see it now. Yes, 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 yes. She can see. She can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stand by faith with you that every spiritual blockages, spiritual hindrances, spiritual veils, spiritual veils, spiritual embargoes, all those forces, spiritual cataracts that block your view and block your sight, that make you to walk around looking without seeing. I command that the power of resurrection will crush them now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Receive your sight. Receive your spiritual insight. Receive your sight. Receive your mind sight. In the name of Jesus. Receive your mental sight. In the name of Jesus. Receive your physical sight. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Tap your neighbor, say neighbor. Tap your neighbor, say neighbor. I can see clearly. Now, turn to another person. That person is envying you. Turn to another person. That, that one is envying you. Turn to someone and say, say neighbor. I can see very clearly. Now, turn to another person behind you. Say neighbor. I can see better. Clearer. From this moment. Now. Turn to another person. Say neighbor. I will share my praise report with you. Very shortly. Because from now, I can see very clearly in Jesus' name.